IOTA ILB CP LED emergency drivers are powerful unit equipment solutions for safe and reliable emergency egress lighting compliance. This video will step through the installation and wiring of an ILB CP LED emergency driver, along with a discussion of its operation under various power conditions and its proper testing and maintenance. If you would like to skip to a specific section, we have organized the video into chapter links which you can click on in the video description. ILB CP LED emergency drivers are designed to bring emergency function to an LED fixture by installing on or near the fixture. The installation location will be dependent on the design of your system, and to help this, IOTA offers several different mounting configurations for the ILB CP to suit your particular application, along with additional mounting accessories to accommodate almost any design. This particular video will focus on the B integral mounting configuration. However, the wiring and testing of each unit will be the same regardless of mounting style. Additionally, this video will address the wiring of ILBCP standard units and ILBCP SD self-diagnostic units, which have slightly different wiring. Before making any connections with your ILBCP LED emergency driver, be sure that AC power has been removed to your fixture. Although your fixture may look different than the example, each wiring application with an ILBCP will contain three basic components. One, a normal or AC driver, which receives a hot and a neutral from AC line voltage. Two, an LED array or module, which is powered by the normal driver through positive and negative leads. And three, your ILB CP LED emergency driver. Note, some normal drivers, such as the one used in the example, feature dimming leads for connection to a 0 to 10 volt dimming control. However, these leads do not affect the operation of your ILB CP and will be ignored in this example. The first step will be to wire the output. First, disconnect the leads connecting the normal driver to the LED module. Then, connect the red positive and blue negative wires from the ILB CP to the positive and negative output wires of the normal driver. Be sure to observe polarity. Next, connect the red white positive and blue white negative wires from the ILB CP to the positive and negative inputs on the LED module. Again, be sure to observe polarity. Afterwards, the output of the ILB CP will be wired successfully. We can now wire the ILB CP input. Note, standard ILB CP and ILB CP self-diagnostic or SD models have slightly different input wiring. We will address both here. First, for both models, we will address the black-orange wire, which is the ILB CP's normal power sense and battery charging input. This wire is used by the ILB CP to both charge its internal batteries and detect whether normal power is supplying the fixture. Therefore, it needs to be connected to an unswitched line input. If you are using a wall switch on your LED fixture, make sure that the black orange wire is connected ahead of the switch. The next steps are for ILB CP standard models only. Disconnect the incoming neutral wire from the normal driver. Then, take one of the white-black wires from the ILB CP, it doesn't matter which, and connect it to the normal driver's neutral input. Then, we will connect the remaining white-black wire and the white wire. Depending on the design of your system, you have two choices for these wires. Typically, you will tie both of these wires together with the incoming neutral wire. However, if your system involves an electrical panel that is dedicated to emergency operation, the white wire may be connected to the dedicated emergency neutral instead. In this example, we have a dedicated emergency neutral, so we will connect the white wire to it, and connect the remaining white-black wire to the LED fixture's incoming neutral. 
Now let's switch to the wiring for the ILB CP SD self diagnostic units. Unlike standard ILB CP models, the incoming neutral wire should remain connected to the normal driver, and instead, we will disconnect the AC line input from the normal driver. Then, we will connect the black white wire to this normal driver's AC line input. The next step is to connect the black wire from the ILB CP to the fixtures line input. And lastly, you may either tie the white wire together with the fixtures incoming neutral and the normal drivers neutral input, or if you have a dedicated emergency panel, you may connect the white wire to its neutral output. Now, regardless of model, the input of the ILB CP should be wired correctly. From here on out, all wiring will be the same between standard and self-diagnostic models. The next step will be to connect the TBTS test button. Remove the TBTS from its packaging and mount it in the desired location where it will be visible and accessible for testing. Again, this location will depend on your application. Then connect the red positive wire from the TBTS to the red-black positive wire from the ILB CP. Then connect the white negative wire from the TBTS to the ILB CP's white-red negative wire. Note, always use the TBTS test button provided with your unit to ensure proper operation. The wiring of your ILB CP unit is now almost complete, and at this point you may reapply AC power to your fixture. Once AC power has been reapplied, the very last step is to mate the ILB CP's unit connector. Note, be sure to not mate the unit connector until permanent AC power has been applied to your fixture, or you will begin to drain the ILB CP's internal batteries and may hinder its proper emergency operation. After mating the unit connector, your TBTS should either illuminate red if your ILB CP is a standard model, or green if it is a self-diagnostic model. Congratulations, our ILB CP is now wired correctly. We can now discuss its operation. During normal power conditions, the ILB CP will simply pass through power to the LED module. This allows your ILB CP powered emergency fixtures to be used as normal during normal conditions and be switched dimmed or otherwise controlled. During a power loss, the ILB CP will detect the loss in power through its black-orange normal power sense and switch to powering the LED module from its internal battery, ignoring any control devices that interface with the normal LED driver. This ensures that your LED lights are illuminated during a power loss situation regardless of wall switch position. After your ILB CP LED emergency driver has been installed and wired correctly, allow the unit to charge for at least one hour before conducting a short discharge test. To conduct a test, press and hold the TBTS test switch. Your LED module should illuminate if it was switched off or remain illuminated if it was already on. To complete a test, release the test button. Your LED module should now return to its normal operation. From here on out, refer to your ILB CP owner's manual for the proper monthly and yearly testing schedule specific to your ILB CP model. Congratulations! You have now properly installed, wired, and tested your ILB CP LED emergency driver and can rest assured that as long as proper testing procedures are followed, your emergency lighting rests in the capable hands of IOTA Engineering. For more information about ILB CP LED emergency drivers or any of our other innovative life safety solutions, please call our friendly customer service team at 1-800-866-4682 or visit us online at iotaengineering.com. If you have any additional questions about the installation, wiring, or operation of an ILB CP LED emergency driver, please feel free to contact our tech support team at 1-855-363-9527. If you like this video and want to see more tips and tutorials about emergency lighting, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel below. Thank you for letting IOTA power your way.